The movie starts with three men walking confidently, like superstars, moving slowly and looking cool. They enter a martial arts gym owned by a martial artist named French. One of the men, David, offers French $10,000 to buy the gym, but French says no. Feeling insulted, David walks onto the practice mat toward French, still wearing his shoes, which makes French very angry. French challenges David to a fight. If French loses, he will sell the gym to David, but if he wins, David has to leave. David accepts the challenge happily, and the fight begins. French is a skilled martial artist, and his uniform shows it. He easily defeats David and his two friends. So, they have to leave as agreed. Afterward, French meets his friend Alex to find a side job. French doesn't earn much from his gym because he doesn't have many students, and he is in financial trouble with lots of debt. He asks Alex to help him get a job as a debt collector since Alex works in that field. Alex refuses because he thinks the job is too dangerous for French. But French is desperate for money and insists. Finally, Alex gives French the address of his boss, Tommy. French goes back to his apartment, taking the emergency stairs to avoid the landlord, who is trying to collect rent. Just after French enters his apartment, the landlord comes looking for the rent. French is three months behind on rent. The next day, French meets Tommy at his office to apply as a debt collector. Tommy accepts him after learning that French is a former British soldier with battlefield experience and good at jiu-jitsu. Tommy teaches him how to be a professional debt collector and assigns him his first job for the next day, accompanied by one of Tommy's men. The next day, French went to work wearing a neat suit, looking like a manager. He met his partner, Sue, at the agreed place. Their first job was to collect a $17,000 debt from a man named Oliver, Ali, Waldstein, who owed money to Tommy. Tommy gave French notes saying that Ali is a rank 10 debtor. Tommy ranks debtors by how hard it is to collect from them, with rank 10 being the easiest and rank 1 the hardest. Knowing this, French drove to Ali's place. When they arrived, French knocked on Ali's door politely. Inside the house, Ali saw Sue on the veranda and got scared. He grabbed a gun and told his girlfriend to answer the door while he and his friend hid in the back. His girlfriend opened the door and talked to Sue for a bit, then tried to send them away and shut the door. But Sue wasn't going to leave easily. He kicked the door open, knocking the girl to the ground. Seeing Sue get inside, Ollie and his friend ran out the back door. French chased them while Sue got in his car to catch up. During the chase, Ollie's friend slipped while trying to shoot French. French took advantage and knocked him down. They fought, but French was too strong. The man, realizing he would lose, ran into the street. At that moment, Sue arrived and hit him with his car. Meanwhile, Ali stole a car from a passing driver. But before he could drive away, French caught up. Panicked, Ali stepped on the gas, but French held onto the window, punching Ali. Eventually, French's grip weakened, and he fell onto the road. At the same time, Ali lost control of the car and crashed into a parked car. The crash left Ali helpless. Sue quickly dragged him out of the car and warned him to pay his debt immediately, ignoring Ali's serious injury. Sue threatened to come back and break his nose if he didn't pay. After giving Ali a final punch, Sue and French went to their next target, Harvey, a rank 5 debtor who owes Tommy over $100,000. On the way, French complained about the dangers of their job. He thought collecting debt from a rank 10 debtor would be easy, like a walk in the park. But instead, he was nearly shot and dragged by a car. French worried about what would happen when they faced a rank 5 debtor if a rank 10 debtor was so difficult. Sue ignored French's complaints. He took his knife and, with French, entered Harvey's shop. Inside, French asked an employee where Harvey was. But before he got any information, Harvey's bodyguard appeared, and French had to fight him. However, his punches had no effect. During the chaos, Sue sneaked into Harvey's room and found him hiding there. Meanwhile, French struggled with the bodyguard. He managed to knock out his tough opponent through sheer determination. But then, another bodyguard appeared and hit French from behind. This new opponent beat French badly and treated him like a toy. Fortunately, Sue came to his rescue by smashing a glass bottle over the bodyguard's head, giving French a chance to fight back. After dealing with the bodyguards, French and Sue confronted Harvey. Tommy had instructed Sue to break Harvey's leg, and Sue did so. With Harvey screaming in pain, Sue and French quietly left. In the car, French complained again about the dangers of their job. In response, 
Sue took French to a movie rental shop and showed him a poster from when he was younger. Sue was a former actor. However, French was unimpressed, calling Sue's movie trash and not understanding why Sue was bragging about his past. Despite French's complaints, they continued their mission. Their next target was Gordon, a rank two debtor who owed $40,000. They arrived at Gordon's house quickly. Before getting out of the car, Sue came up with a plan. He told French to act aggressively to get the money from Gordon. When they met a bodyguard on the terrace, Sue started cursing to create tension. French had to fight the bodyguard, who was very strong. After a tough fight and exchanging many blows, French finally knocked him down. French then looked for Sue and found him in the backyard with Gordon and his girlfriend. Sue, drinking casually, ordered French to watch Gordon while he went inside to get the money. As soon as Sue left, Gordon offered French money to cooperate with him. French unexpectedly refused and punched Gordon in the stomach. With no other choice, Gordon showed French his safe, which had $100,000 inside. Meanwhile, in the backyard, Gordon's girlfriend tried to seduce Sue by taking off her dress. Their moment was interrupted by French, who brought Gordon's money. Without wasting time, they left quickly. They had just driven a short distance when they encountered the bodyguard French had fought earlier, now with two friends. French and Sue could have run away but their fighting spirit made them stay and face the challenge from the three men. After a very tiring day, French and Sue decided to have lunch together before heading home. At home, French only slept. He needed the rest because he and Sue had to meet Tommy the next day to give him the money they collected. When they met Tommy, he told them that Harvey had paid off all his debts. Their conversation was short because Tommy took French and Sue to meet his friend, Barbosa. Barbosa wanted Tommy's help to catch Connor Mulligan, an Irishman who had stolen his money. While Barbosa was explaining, his fiancée, Amanda, suddenly left the room, not wanting to hear the conversation. Tommy, curious, asked how much money was stolen, but Barbosa avoided the question. Tommy didn't press him for an answer. Instead, he explained how their system worked and how they rank targets. A rank 10 target would only get a warning, but a rank 1 target would be beaten severely. Barbosa chose the rank 1 package without hesitation and gave Tommy $20,000 and Connor's last known address. With this information, French and Sue went to Connor's workplace, a bar. Before they could ask about Connor, the bar owner rudely told them to leave because the bar was closed. Sue, without saying much, took a toothpick and stabbed it into the bar owner's eye. Soon after, a barman, who was also a bodyguard, appeared. He recognized Sue and, knowing how tough Sue was, didn't want to mess with him. However, he didn't know French and immediately started fighting him. As French fought with the barmaid, Sue interrogated the barman about Connor. The barman said Connor had quit working there a month ago and was a nice guy. He suggested that Barbosa had lied about Connor. Sue didn't believe the barman and tortured him until he revealed an address. The barman told Sue to find Tim, Connor's former roommate, as Tim would know where Connor was. Since they had nothing else to do at the bar, Sue took French to Tim's apartment. French managed to turn the fight around and knocked the barman down before they left. Sue and French found Tim at his apartment. Tim, like the bar owner, said Connor was a nice person and even had a child. He told them they should be going after Barbosa instead. French and Sue didn't believe him. French threatened to hurt Tim if he didn't tell them where Connor was. Scared for his life, Tim said that Connor had moved to a place called Topanga with a woman named Sandy. French and Sue got back in the car and went to Connor's new address. When they arrived, French knocked gently on Connor's door. As soon as Connor's son opened the door, French headbutt him. They then beat the boy until his nose bled. The noise brought Sandy out. They tried to interrogate her about Connor, but she also said Connor was a good, innocent man. Sandy said that Amanda knew where Connor was. After getting this information, they went home to rest. The next day, they followed Amanda until she went to an apartment building. She was talking to someone over the intercom, yelling and calling the person an Irish bastard. Suspecting she was talking to Connor, Sue and French confronted her, threatening to reveal her relationship with Connor to Barbosa. Amanda, realizing her secret was out, finally gave them Connor's apartment number. Sue and French rushed to Connor's apartment. Amanda wasn't lying. Connor opened the door himself. While they were interrogating him about the stolen money, Connor's daughter appeared. She looked very concerned seeing her father being treated harshly. To calm her, Connor lied, saying French and Sue were friends. Sue played along, 
saying they were playing hide and seek and invited her to play. She believed him and went off to hide. After the girl left, Sue immediately asked Connor why Barbosa was after him. Connor explained that he used to work at Barbosa's club and fell in love with a dancer named Crystal. They started a relationship and Crystal became pregnant. But Barbosa also liked Crystal and couldn't accept her being pregnant by another man. In a rage, he stabbed her even though she was still pregnant. Connor tried to save her and took her to the hospital, but Crystal couldn't be saved. She did give birth to a daughter before she died, and that child was the girl Sue and French had just seen. Hearing Connor's story, French told him to leave town immediately, but Sue didn't agree, fearing they would get into trouble if they let Connor go. They argued, each defending their viewpoint. French insisted they would be nothing but cold-blooded killers if they handed Connor over to Barbosa. French's words made Sue realize what was right, and he told Connor to take his daughter and leave. After that, French and Sue went downstairs and met Amanda again. She revealed that they had fallen into Barbosa's trap. Barbosa planned to kill Connor and make Sue and French the scapegoats. Worse, Barbosa was now in the elevator, heading to Connor's apartment. Realizing Connor was in danger, they hurried back up. When they reached the floor, they found it filled with Barbosa's men. French knew they couldn't face an armed enemy head-on, especially with Sue feeling uncertain. So, he devised a plan and explained it to Sue. They waited for the right moment as the enemies passed. When the time was right, they ambushed them, beat them until they passed out, and took their weapons. Using the stolen weapons, they started shooting at Barbosa's men. Amid the chaos, French and Sue entered Connor's room. They told Connor to leave immediately with his daughter while they stayed to protect them. Moments after Connor left, two of Barbosa's men entered the room. A gunfight started, and after a few moments of exchanging shots, French and Sue killed them. Thinking it was safe, they came out from behind their cover. But this was a mistake because three more of Barbosa's men entered and shot at them. Sue was shot several times and fell down helplessly. French was also shot but managed to escape. After the gunfight, Barbosa came out of hiding to finish off Sue. Luckily, Tommy suddenly appeared and stopped him. Tommy had realized that Barbosa had set them up. Without hesitation, he shot Barbosa dead. Moments later, the police arrived at the scene. Meanwhile, a badly injured French got back into his car and fell unconscious. At the end of the film, Connor and his daughter are having dinner together. Thanks to the sacrifices of French and Sue, they could finally live a normal family life without fear. So the moral of the story is always pay your debts on time. Or you might end up in a ridiculous series of brawls, car chases, and headbutting kids at their own front door.